We're back on Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We are broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studios. We've got the Mayor Pro Tem, Steve Massingale, also a councilman. Uh, for what well, your district five? Four. 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 District four. We're, we're in district five, but I'm represent district four. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yes, uh, that's right. We're sitting in district five we, right now. We're not very far from district we're four. We're not. Your line's just right, <laughs> yeah. right down the street. Yep. But. Um, but yeah, so uh, Mayor Pro Tem Steve Massingale, we've uh, a lot going on with the city. Um, one of the uh, the big things going on is uh, the park, and then y'all y'all had a city council meeting last night. But first, how are how are you today? I'm doing I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here in person in studio with you this morning. That's so. right. Yeah, and, and all, all three of us have either had COVID or we've had our shots. Or we've so been we're vaccinated. So we're so. safe. Yep. Or Should both. Yeah. Well, we think. So, uh, from that. Oh, huh? From that. Yeah. We're safe from, <laughs> We're safe from COVID. That's right. Uh, What'd you do to us last night? Well, we didn't do anything. We had a very interesting meeting. Um, a lot of interesting topics in work session. City bus. We talked about Civic Park. Um, we talked about Lubbock becoming a film, film friendly city. Ooh, I like that. And, uh, which was really cool. There's, there's a, there's a video out that's, uh, that, that kind of promotes that, that, that that's pretty cool. And hey, where I else want, are you going to get a film of a haboob without going uh, you know, out to the Middle East or something? There was no haboobs in this film. <laughs> well, I know, but I'm just saying that if, if yeah. you want a haboob film, you need to yeah. come here or I you need to go to the Middle East. I tell you what, you know, Georgia is, is taking over a lot of the film industry. The state oh, of Georgia. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that. And uh, I've got a really best friend and his wife live in Savannah. And and she's about six foot one and just striking. She's part Indian and, uh-huh. and has uh, very dark skin. Very beautiful woman. And she has she's done about ten movies. Really, they they've always filming in Savannah. And she yeah. she's kind of got in with them. Uh, and and they call her up for every movie. Uh, and you know she'll she'll she was in a wedding party in one of the Hallmark movies, or she'll just be she played a doctor in another. Not speaking roles, but just. Oh yeah. Like anyway, so this interests me. Yeah. I, I, what do you have to do well, for Lubbock to become film, film friendly? I guess there's a set of requirements to meet. I don't know all all the detail of all the requirements, but it comes from the Texas Film Commission, and so now that we've been designated that, they know the characteristics and and the the assets that might be valuable in movies that at the Texas Film Commission, and so as production companies need. Um, Settings, I guess, uh, they will contact the film commission and then they'll filter them, filter them to us. So, be exciting to see what comes our way. I mean, you there's, make a there's great nowhere, point. There's nowhere flatter than here either. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for planes that is less flat, yeah, you got a big, big cotton patch with great sunsets here. Well, now you have world class performing arts center. Uh-huh. Uh, you got you got a world class university. I mean, there's some things here that 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 I could see they would need as backgrounds in film. So. We'll see what happens, but it is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, I, I'd like to see us pursue that. Of course, the wh- what's up with City Bus? Well, City Bus is interesting also. So um, uh, we've been doing a, a, a comprehensive study with City Bus, and we got to hear some of that last night. You know, some of the City Bus's routes have been the same for years and years and years, and our city has grown quite a bit. And so... Um, what the what uh, city bus leadership presented to us last night was how those new routes would serve some of these underserved parts of the city. It co- combined with micro transit, and as you know, we 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 have a micro transit system now. It's it's an on demand service. We ha- city bus has an app, kind of like Uber. What's, what's a micro? So it's uh, we small buses, and if you wanted a ride, you would you would pull out your phone and and you would. Um, Pull up the City Bus app, and you'd get a ride much like you get with Uber. Now, Ooh, cool. you might ride with somebody else, and you might walk a little bit farther than your front door to get on the bus. But it, I don't, I can't, I don't even know what. I think it's three dollars. I don't know what exactly what the rate is, but it's a it's a very subsidized rate, and then you can you can get to where you you need to go. Now, what they'll do is they'll combine that with, you know, if you need to get downtown, they might pick you up, and they might route you to a a, a um, a, a place where you can pick up a bus, and then you might ride the bus the, the rest of the distance. So who's well, cool. subsidizing the rate? Uh, well, s- city bus gets subsidized substantially by the federal government, and the city of Lubbock G- general fund does as well. Yeah. 
Well, that's I didn't uh, know that. We need to let people know where they can get, where they can go get this app. Yeah, yeah. We talked about it last night. I was uh, I don't want. It's, uh, go to the city of Lubbock website. So it's called City Bus On Demand. Just search City Bus C I T I. Uh, bus on demand on in your app store or the Android store, and you'll find it. There you go. Okay. Hey, that's that's handy. Yeah, and and I think that that will continue to grow. We've seen. Um, I had the chance though a few years ago to be in Arlington, and Arlington doesn't have a public transit system like we do. They don't have a city bus, but they implemented this micro transit, and it had really has really become successful. So, oh. well, cool. So, uh, of course, what uh, seems to be on most people's mind that are t- that are texting us uh, and so far this morning is the city park. A lot of pushback from some about the city park, and it seems like their biggest concern is it's going to be overrun with homeless people. Well, and, and I'm I'm just reminded that you know I was on the library board during mm-hmm. this this episode when uh, the homeless really literally kind of took over Mayhon Library downtown. And they are no longer there because they they were moved mm-hmm. elsewhere. I feel certain that the city will uh, will that won't be an issue with this park. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, first of all, homeless homelessness is on our mind, and we have a committee led by Councilwoman Joy, and and she's working on that. We look forward to hearing from her. You know, cities have been successful uh, managing their homeless population. We, we are fortunate we don't have the percentage of homeless that, say, Amarillo does. But that's no reason not to pursue this park because I think we can do this park and uh, make sure that there's no, there's no negativity around the park, assuming we uh, decide to move forward with the park. It's important to note that the TIF is funded, the downtown TIF has funded the study that we're talking about. The park has not been funded. I think it's our hope that this park is a public private partnership when it's all said and done. Do you think it's a pretty done deal? Well, it's not a done deal um, well, because um, we haven't seen the finality of the study, but the council has not decided to move forward with it. We're just in the, the feasibility part. Well, but do you think it will? You think the council will move forward? Let me answer it this way. I'm supportive of the park, and I hope that it, it well, I we think move forward with it. From what I've seen of it, I think it will be a fantastic asset for downtown Lubbock. It will. It will. It'll be something that we don't have anywhere. It's not going to be like our neighborhood parks. It's going to be, you know, I think the mayor refers to it as our living room, and it's going to be cool. If you've ever been to um, Sundance Square in Fort Worth, they have a park. That's, that's the kind of park this is. Uh, I think our park is going to be nicer than Sundance. We've got, we've got more space to work with, but... Yeah. These anchored downtown parks can be catalytic to downtown development, downtown exactly. redevelopment. We're just in a good place with that right now. But, but let me ask you. I know you, you're talking about tearing down that old LPNL building. Mm-hmm. That's a huge building. Uh, is, is it? It's actually two buildings because yeah. it's got a parking garage and and that's all got to go. Is it, it'll be a million dollars to tear it down? They say we don't know. We don't know that. Uh, we don't know that some of that but, might be kept. But is well, I, my, what I'm wondering is it. Is that building, is it just not um, conducive to uh, saving and having someone move into? Well, I think when you decide what impact your park would have on downtown and, and other people investing downtown versus saving that building, I think you err on the side of the park. You, you know, but, but I would think that there, is, there are other areas downtown that would be easy, more easily demolished. And a, and a park to go there. Mm, I don't know. Rather than because it's going to take a lot to tear down that building. It will, uh, but I mean, you, it's strategically located. When you, when you look at our, our downtown master plan, which we think is a good plan, right there on Broadway, it it looks like it's the best place to do it. It's already a city owned property, which helps. Mm-hmm. That way, you don't have to go spend money to buy buy something else. But. No. Uh, what we talked about last night is this morning the the um, uh, website is up for the first phase of the public input, and we're doing it virtually or online because of COVID right now. But uh, LubbockCivicPark.org, if I remember that correctly, and so it's got a really pretty intuitive platform for you to go and say, uh, "I like the park. This is what I'd like to see in the park. 
Maybe you don't like the park. It's your that's it's your time to get online and tell us about that. Let's uh, let's take a quick break uh, here on News Talk ninety five point one FM seven ninety AM KFYO. We're speaking with Mayor Pro Tem and Council Councilman uh, Massingell, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We are broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studios. We've got Mayor Pro Tem and uh, Council Lubbock City Councilman Steve Massingell. And we're talking a little bit about the park. Now, you were telling us about the website. Um, if you'd give us the website again and tell us exactly what you're wanting for at, at this website. I believe it's for public input. So the web address is LubbockCivicPark.org. And uh, this is the first opportunity for the public to give input to the, the, the committee that, that is overseeing this, this study. And there's three pieces to this. I would... I would call everyone's attention to one is you can kind of you can see the preliminary design and you can make comments and so you might there's a way in the, in here to say man I would love to see an ice cream stand and you can drag a thing and put it on the map or say you can talk about your concerns for homelessness here you can talk about that you'd like to see a, a stage for live music you can talk about maybe you want to see in the colder months, a temporary ice rink, which has been some of the preliminary and some of the concepts that the, the consultant has shown. So this is the this is everyone's opportunity to get some input in for the committee to consider. Now, some of the big ones I've seen uh, were food trucks were one of the big mm-hmm. ones. They want a, a place for food trucks. Uh, I think splash pads have been mentioned mm-hmm. multiple times. And... Um, and and a stage, which you've already mentioned. Mm-hmm. I think those were the three really things that I've seen more than anything else. Yeah, I would agree. And, and those were in all of, the, all of our concepts. Um, What's uh, the name of that website again? for the- LubbockCivicPark.org. And so some of the things here the, the, in, in this legend that you can drag and talk about, a cafe, kiosk, event lawn, festival, street, I guess it the, the, you close the street off around it for festivals, ornamental planning, restrooms, public art, splash pads, shade structure, streetscape with seating, tables and chairs. And then you've got the opportunity to write whatever you want. And um, so we would encourage everyone to take a few minutes and go to Lubbock Civic Park. Watch your language, please. What's that? No, I meant the oh. people. If they're going to put something on there, don't, slipped, don't be mean or, or evil. Yeah, yeah. Or, or Yeah, it's not your watch, opportunity to... You watch know. your language. Lubbock, yeah. LubbockCivicPark.org. If you don't like the park, just no say, I don't I don't want to park. I mean, it, this is for people yeah. if they want to say that, but but don't don't be mean or crude. Be yeah, nice. Just constructive criticism welcomed, but we want everybody's input on what they dream this park might, might end up being. Well... I'm not getting it on LubbockCivicPark.org. I've got it right up here right now. Well, it says the site can't be reached. Anyway. You may need to refresh or I don't know, but I've got it. It's working. It's live on mine. And I don't okay. think. Uh, well, we have some textures this morning, and one says we had 41 murders last year in the city. Does the councilman think the police substations will help or lower that? Well, I would hope it would help, you know, Public safety is job one. Uh, we we have a great deal of confidence in Chief Mich- Mitchell and his leadership team, and uh, we're anxious to get them in those new facilities so that um, they can use them to the best of their ability. Yeah, but, I mean, if you look at uh, the murder, or at least the homicide, uh, murder may not be the right word to use there, but the homicide rate, most of it has been either uh, domestic or drug-related, and so that's... Uh, if you can take the drugs down, that would make a difference there. But domestic's almost impossible to stop sure. before the act happens. Yeah. Chief did a great video on that in the fall. I can't remember how it all breaks down, but it was like one random or something, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, the, yeah, the random random ones are the ones that, uh, I mean, even those are, are very hard to stop. But uh, the drug activity, I think if we can take that down, that'll be the the big thing. And I know that... Uh, COVID has been one of the things that have, that has had some effect on that, but, um, what is it's, it's that the police are always going to be closer now because the beats are smaller. Is that how that's working? Yeah. The city will be divided up in, in, in three geographic areas, each fed by one of the substations and, uh, they'll s- start and stop their day. In other words, you'll, when these substations are finished, you're going to see loads of police cars 
at, at each substation. The, the first substation will, will complete here in a few months in June, and that will be the East substation. I got to walk through it the other day. It's really cool, and I think it's important to remind everybody also there's community. There's a community room in each one of these substations. So if you had a neighborhood association you wanted to visit with okay. the police. We're going to take a quick break. Can okay. you hold over? Yep. All right, we'll be right back with Councilman Steve Massingale here on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. Welcome back to Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We're broadcasting from the Thacker Jewelry Studios. Start your story with engagement rings and wedding bands from Thacker Jewelry online at thackerjewelry.com. Uh, we do, uh, we, what we've been talking about during the break, I think, is a great topic to get into now, and that's ERCOT, the move to ERCOT. Um, is it going to happen? Is there any kind of pause that's going to happen? And uh, between now and, I guess, June 1st is, is when the official date happens. Mm-hmm. No, we're, um, st- we're still on track to, to, to join ERCOT. I think we're watching closely what happens in Austin. I, even as recently as, well, I think it may have been Monday evening, the, thir- the second PUC commissioner has resigned. As you know, they terminated the CEO of ERCOT. Uh, I had the opportunity to be with Lieutenant Governor. Oh, a couple of weeks ago, he came into town specifically to talk about this. He reassured us that he, they were going to do everything they can uh, to, um, you know, fix the problems and that maybe that's changing their governance, probably, um, change the scope of oversight from the, the legislature. Um, last week, the governor was in Lubbock of uh, the mayor and I got, uh, a few minutes with him to talk about a couple things. One thing that was brought up was ERCOT and, uh, the governor, uh, the way he responded is it, it's it's a good time to, to be joining because it's going to be completely revamped and and um, hopefully engineered in a way that will prevent this type of situation from happening in well, the, the future. Qu- the question is, are, are you convinced that, uh, that these these issues will be resolved once we get once we join? Uh, they have not been resolved, but I am I'm I am convinced that the uh, our state leadership is committed to fixing it. Well, we've got to. Mm-hmm. So. There was one question I had, uh, and I don't know uh, the few times I've asked this question, I've asked it before, uh, is that it's it's almost impossible to tell. But how do you know whether you're in the 33% that's not moving to ERCOT or, or staying with, uh, with their current power? I don't know how to answer that, Matt. It's my understanding that it's scattered. Mm-hmm. It depends that's on, what I've heard. It also depends on... Um, keep in mind, w- when we had competition in town, there were two sets of lines running, so... Your, your house, what you don't know is your house may still be on a SPS XL line, although it's all LPNL. So difficult question to answer. Yeah. Well, and, and I asked, I, you know, we bought a house five, five, maybe six years ago, and everything was already changed. So we have no idea what we're on. That's right. And, um, you know, we're, we our goal is to make that as seamless as possible. So I, I hope it never becomes an issue. But um, that 30, yes, you're correct. There's 30% that when we switch over uh, initially will not be on the grid, okay. on the ERCOT grid. And long term, is that something that is going to happen? Are they going to bring those people into the grid? Long term, I, I hope there's a solution to that. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, all right. well, we have I, a, te- a texture that says, how soon will it be before we see uh, peak command rate charges for commercial customers? There's no, there's no plan for that. You, when we switch over to ERCOT, you won't see any difference. You won't, you won't even know when we switch. You'll still be with LPNL to begin. That's with. right. And then we've also made a commitment to opt into retail competition. Now, that could be another, I don't know, could be two years. I'm not sure when when we'll switch over. But um, when we switch over in June, you won't know any difference. Another texture says, has the councilman changed his permission? on supporting, I think maybe that his position, but his permission on supporting the Sanctuary City Ordinance. Well, I mean, at this point, the Sanctuary City uh, is in the out of the hands of the council and in the hands of uh, the voter. My, my position is the, the Supreme Court is still the law of the land, and we know that any ordinance that is passed uh, by the city of Lubbock would be unenforceable at, at the time it was passed. And it so, would involve us with a big legal bill, would it not? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, Connor, just uh, Bobby, I'm, I think uh, if you will just tell Connor what your question is and Connor can send it to us because I, I think uh, we've talked. Uh, he's got a question about ERCOT, but we'll we'll have Connor um, send that over. Okay. Uh, another qu- uh, texture is wanting to know uh, p- 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 uh, about the uh, – uh, st- uh, the staffing situation uh, says police substations will not help anything until the PD's manpower issues are resolved. Says the patrol division is currently forty-five plus officers short. Are we that short right now? I don't know what the current numbers are, but we recruit all the time, and um, you know I think police understands that how important it is to be staffed. So again, I'll rely on them to take care of that. Um, has there been any talk about in, in the next uh, budget cycle raising the amount of police officers that we have? We always talk about adjusting the number of commissioned officers to make sure that we have adequate per our population. So when our uh, when we just begin budget talks in late July, I'm sure that'll come up. <clears throat> have there been any new talks about the city charter changes? Yes, well, we've um, appointed a committee. Right. That committee is not met. Okay. I believe they meet week first for the first time week after next. Um, those meetings will be in the light of day. So that, but that's where it is right now, and, and it's that's... in the hands of the committee. Okay. Um, there's a seven person committee. Each council person co- appointed one individual, one citizen to serve on that committee. Uh, that committee's charge is to get their work done and back to council yep. by the end of May. Uh, in just a minute or so that we have left, we want to uh, let you have the floor. If there's something in particular that you want to tell our audience. I think we we'll go back to what we started with today. I, first off, I uh, would love for you to spend a few minutes on the Civic Park, LubbockCivicPark.org. Um, for those people that access public transportation, Take a few minutes and and understand what we're doing with micro transit, and uh, download the app, and um, hopefully that's helpful to you, especially as we make our our changes with City Bus. That's, I think you know I I don't use City Bus, but I think City Bus is important to a lot of people trying to get to work, which makes it important to employers. And uh, so I think that's uh, an appropriate time for City Bus to adjust what they're doing to better serve the public. Yeah, and I, I told Jeff Griffith this, so I'll. I'll tell you, Councilman Griffith, I'll tell you as well. Um, I think the city did an amazing job during the storm. And uh, so I, I think that y'all were very prepared. So I, I say congratulations to the city. And I, I think that uh, that gave me a lot of confidence after, you know, what was it? Two, three, four years ago, we had a big storm. <coughs> And it, we had a, a lot of a lot of Goliath. issues. Yeah, a lot of issues with that. This one was worse than that one. I mean, we had less snow, I guess, but I mean, cold and the the well, streets and everything. Cre- cre- credit go, goes to job. our city manager, Mr. Atkinson, and his team. Um, uh, Mr. Atkinson gets it. He understands how to react to these types of things very well. And you know, we pay attention when there is potential bad weather, and they're way ahead of it every time, which they should be. And uh, but we're proud of what they've done, and uh, I agree with you, Matt. I thought the city did a, a fabulous job during the storm. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to have to the time to bring up one of my <clears throat> nitpicking things is the, the sirens. I, I I still don't understand that, but <laughs> it's done, Dave. I, you know, got to give him a little yeah. bit of grief. <laughs> That's we, I fine. Mean, we've been we've been heaping, you know, heaping praise on him. But I think the, the sirens were a dumb deal, just so you sirens know. Just, are, just to keep you in line, Council. I understand. Sirens are, you know, when you don't have <laughs> sirens, everyone's complaining about not having sirens. And then now we, we find out an affordable way to do sirens, and, and uh, Dave's, Dave's upset at us. So. I, that's, that's the only thing I'm upset with. I think you're doing great. I think you, I like your park. I like your city bus. I like everything. Okay. Right, well, except, yeah. except your sirens. Duly noted, Dave. Okay. Right, Council thank and Massengill, thank you for, for coming in. Always. And uh, we'll see you again here in about a month. This is News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM, KFYO. Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. We'll be right back.